Aloha and welcome to Restaurants of Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Siobhan Garcia, the Executive Assistant for the Hawaii Restaurant Association. I am filling in for our ever so lovely Executive Director, Cheryl Matsuoka. Uh, this is a twice a month uh, program. We discuss important and timely topics centered around our Hawaii food service industry. And today we will be talking about how you can get your ERC money for your restaurant today. Today, we will be talking with Jerry Packer. Jerry is the Business Development Director for Omega Accounting Solutions. So before I welcome him and let him introduce himself, I did wanna say thank you to Omega Accounting Solutions for becoming one of HRA's most recent corporate partners. With that said, welcome Jerry and tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Siobhan, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here and it's also a pleasure to, uh, to sponsor and uh, form a partnership, so we appreciate that. Uh, my name is Jerry Packer, and as you said, I am the Director of Business Development here at Omega uh, Accounting Solutions. My job is to educate and um, inform uh, referral partners and business owners about ERC and uh, really go through the good, bad, and ugly of, of the whole process. Well, thank you so much. We're so glad to have you. Um, so I think we've talked a little bit before that the HRA has been talking about the ERC for some time now, but we wanted to give um, our viewers who are new or who have never heard about the ERC a little bit of background. Um, Jerry, could you please tell us a little bit what the ERC is and who qualifies? Sure. The ERC stands for the Employee Retention Credit. It is a bio, It's part of the CARES Act. Um, initially, the, um, when the CARES Act came out, there was PPP and there was ERC. Uh, a business owner could not take both. They had to choose one or the other. Uh, and 99.9% .9 of the business owners went with PPP. Um, in 2021, in the beginning of 2021, Congress made some amendments. And one of those amendments was that uh, businesses that had taken PPP could now apply for ERC. So it's really a refund, if you will, for wages an employer paid uh, their employees during the pandemic. Well, great. Thank you for giving a little bit of a background. Um, you know, for those viewers who are um, not new and who have heard about the ERC, uh, but maybe haven't taken advantage of it yet. Um, can you tell us if there's been any updates since the inception of the beginning of the ERC? Absolutely. Thank you. A great question. Um, in part of that amendment, um, or in addition to the amendment, the, the change that I just talked about as far as allowing business owners to take or apply for ERC um, if they had taken PPP, there were several other changes that were made. One was is that in 2020, the uh, maximum number of full-time employees a business owner could have to qualify for ERC was 100. In 2021, that was raised to 500 full-time W-2 employees. Um, another change that was made, which is quite significant, is uh, the maximum a, an owner could get per W-2 employee in 2020 was $5,000. The maximum in 21 jumped to $21,000, so a huge jump. Uh, also, the threshold to qualify on the revenue test was lowered. And what I mean by that is in 2020, you had to show a quarterly uh, decline of 50% compared to the same quarter of 2019. And in 2021, you only had to show a 20% credit, or excuse me, a 20% decline in revenue in uh, the, the quarter compared to the same quarter of 29th threshold was significantly lowered. So you're saying that there's these um, new updates and, um, you know, I guess one of my questions too would be, what do you tell somebody who says, I, you know, I started a business in 2020. I, I opened up a new restaurant. I was right at the beginning, or I was already planned to open in the middle of 2020. Is there anything for those businesses? 
There is. There's something called the recovery startup credit, which a business can qualify for. And um, as long as their annual, their annualized revenue did not exceed $1 million. So if they started up in December and let's say they did um, $50,000, that would be annualized to $600,000. So they could actually uh, potentially qualify for that. If they had done $100,000 in December and that's annualized, that would be $1.2 million. So they would not qualify or would not be able to actually apply for it. Okay. And, um, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, the new updates and everything too, we've had some questions from people saying, you know, we, we don't know what, um, what all the changes were with all the closures. And there was so many different, you know, statewide, we had different ones. And I know in different states, they had different um, closures as well. Is that something you would be able to help them with uh, getting all of that accounted for? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, we definitely would. We, we track all of the state and county um, uh, orders that actually were instituted during or implemented during uh, COVID. So yes, we could absolutely help them with that. Okay. So that's not something they would have to do on their own. That's part of working with Omega. That is correct, Siobhan. Um, we are specialists when it comes to um, accounting and really to the tax credits. We've been doing R&D credits for a number of years. Um, we handle literally everything from the time that we collect the documents to the time we actually do the filing. So um, the business owner just needs to provide us with some answers and the, and the required documents. And we hire, excuse me, we handle the rest of that. Okay. So that leads me to my next question. You know, why would a business choose Omega Accounting as their ERC provider? Great question. Um, ERC is huge. It is one and a half times the size of PPP. And there are what we call pop-ups getting into this field, if you will. And uh, many of them have no accounting experience, have no experience in uh, government tax credits. Um, and my experience has been that they some of the business owners that I have talked to and that have provided the documents, um, they have not been given correct information. In fact, um, I had one business owner that he was told qualified for $1.4 million. And we actually went through and audited it for him on his request. And he didn't, he didn't qualify for any credit whatsoever. And the way that they're able to do that is because the government uh, essentially is not approving or denying the applications, except that they're really large. Um, for the most part, they're just processing them. So um, a business owner might think, wow, I got whatever I got and I'm in, I'm in the clear, but, um, Potentially, there could be an audit down the road. The IRS has time, has five years to go back and, and audit. So uh, you want to make sure that somebody who, who, who you are working with is established. We've been in business for 15 years. Um, we have been here and we will be here long after the ERC program is over. So you, you touched on a little bit about um, the audit side. Can you talk a little bit about your guys' audit protection package? Sure. Um, there's really two ways to qualify for, um, for ERC. There's one, which is the decrease in revenue, and the other one, which I'm sure a lot of restaurants, uh, this would apply to a lot of restaurants, which is uh, the, the technical term or the government term is full or partial suspension. I think that that's kind of misleading. I, we, we choose to call it a nominal disruption. So what we've got to be able to do is prove that a business and quantify this, uh, that a business was affected nominally 10% or more. Um, so in order to do that, we um, produce a, uh, an impact study and, um, and we tell the narrative as well. So we, we provide what we call an audit protection package at the end of the process. So God forbid the business owner is audited. They literally have a book report, if you will, that they can hand the IRS that'll have um, our methodology, our calculations and the narrative, which is really the most important when it comes to nominal disruption. Wow, that, that sounds amazing. You know, especially for these people, that's their biggest concern, right? Is audit and 
especially with these newer credits that um, kind of were introduced not you know, in, in the last couple of years during the pandemic, I know that's a big topic for people. So I think that's a relief to know that you guys have a whole process that will really ease their mind into this. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of people say too, oh, I, I'm not gonna apply for ERC. My business doesn't qualify or it's gonna be too difficult. Can you kind of touch on what um, types of documents they may need or what would um, help them make ease their mind into knowing that this is not going to be as difficult as it sounds? Sure. Well, let me, that, there's really, uh, I think, two uh, answers to what you were saying there, Siobhan. And first is, I think there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to ERC, when you're saying that a business owner might think that they don't qualify. I think some of those misconceptions are, number one, uh, I received PPP, therefore I don't, I don't qualify. Two, our business was up and therefore we don't qualify. Or three, we never shut down either partially or, uh, or fully. So uh, the, none of those are, are disqualifiers. So um, just wanna make that uh, really well known. Um, as far as the documentation that is required, we ask for P&Ls, uh, profit and loss statements, uh, by quarter, calendar quarter for 19, 20 and 21. We ask for payroll reports for 20 and 21. If the business offers uh, employee benefits, healthcare, we're going to need healthcare statements. And lastly, uh, we're going to need PPP forgiveness applications. So really just four areas of, of, of documentation is what we need. After that, we literally handle everything. And um... I'm, I'm sure this is not really, uh, not everybody has a typical, but in a typical setting, about how long does this process take? Our process from the time that we get all the documents collected takes anywhere from two to four weeks. Um, if it's a, um, a pretty much just on revenue decline, it's going to be on the shorter end of that. And if we have to do an impact study because of nominal disruption, um, it's on the higher side, closer to four weeks. And is that when you say four weeks, is that for like here in Hawaii, right? We had a lot of different orders and different shutdowns. Does that have anything to do with that process? Yes. It's researching and making sure that we can document everything and, and that, uh, it really is an airtight case. Uh, again, should the business owner be audited? We don't want them having a problem with the IRS and we don't want to be having a problem with the IRS. So we are, um, while we try to get the most amount of money we can for the business owner, we want to make sure that it will hold water. Gotcha. Makes sense and smart. Um, you know, so big question everybody's going to ask is how long do they have to claim this credit? And is there a deadline? Um, it takes a the government, as I'm sure everybody has heard, the IRS is extremely backed up. Um, refunds are taking anywhere from about four to 10 months, depending on the size of the refund. Um, so um, we also have an option, though, um, when we qualify, when we determine that a business will qualify, we present them with the option of being able to get their money sooner. And that would be done through um, our finance division that, uh, that we have. So a business can get, a business owner can get that in as, as soon as five days. Um, but typically the average that the government is, run, is running is, like I said, it's about four to 10 months. Probably the average is six to eight. Okay. And for a business- And that comes in the form of a check, by the way. Oh, perfect. So, and so it is actually, it's a tax refund versus a tax credit. Is that correct? Well, it started out as a tax credit um, when the pandemic first hit um, and it has sent, and they still consider it a tax credit, but you're no longer actually taking the credit. It's coming in the form of a check. It actually comes in the form of many checks because it comes uh, in checks per quarter because oh. we file per quarter based on the 941s. I see. And um is there a deadline for them to be able to do this? Um, you know, we're all coming up on tax season soon, right? So will they need to do this by a certain date? Yes, there's a three-year um, 
window from the time that they filed the 941 for that quarter. So essentially, uh, 2020 ends at the end of 23 and 2021 ends at the end uh, or the end of the third quarter of 2024 is the latest we can actually file for that last quarter of 2021. So um, the sooner somebody can do it, quite honestly, the better. I see. Okay. And, you know, I'm assuming, right, with as with any company, um, if for some reason they go through you folks and they say, oh, find out they don't qualify, is there any money required from them? Um, no, there is no risk whatsoever. We do require a very small deposit um, to, to initiate the process, mm -hmm. um, and that is fully refundable if, in fact, um, the business does not qualify. If the business does qualify, we hold that and we credit that against the balance that they pay us when they receive their check from the IRS. So besides that um, refundable deposit, um, they're not out anything until they actually get their money from the IRS. And, and when you say when they get their money, is it, um, I know you mentioned a check, do they also have the option like with other refunds to get it electronically or will it always be in the form of a check? They always come in the form of a check. I see. Um, so, you know, because we were talking about how there's the deadline and, um, you know, I guess the other question a lot of people have is, um, well, I guess more in the sense of, um, you said it takes about however long the government is taking. Um, the other thing is, I'm trying to figure out the way to say this exactly, but are there stipulations on how they can use that money? Great question. Um, no, there are not. This is not like PPP where it has to be applied to certain things. Um, so we all, I'm sure have heard about the gentleman that went out and bought a Lamborghini uh, with his PPP money. No, you can use this, the business owner can use it for anything they want. It is not a loan and it does not have to be forgiven. Okay, that's perfect. I mean, this is actually a re again, it's a rebate against uh, for wages paid uh, to their employees during the pandemic. So it really is their money that they're getting back. Right, I see. And so um, if they don't have all their documents in order, and it takes them a little while, um, and they're working with somebody, you know, let's just say they're working with their accountant, and they come to you and don't have everything. Um, is there a time limit with you guys that they have to get everything to continue to work with you guys as a partnership? Um, well, we'd like to try to move it along as quickly as possible. Each client is um, assigned a case manager, and that is the point of contact through the entire process. So they're really only going to be dealing with one person. And part of the job of the case manager is to help them uh, a lot of times they don't really know where to go for the documentation or how to get the documentation. So part of their job is to actually advise them and, and kind of coax them along um, in that. So um, we have had some cases where we're waiting months and literally we have filed um, uh, we have filed a credit in as short as three days. We got the, we got the documentation the same day that they signed the agreement and we literally filed it within three days. So it, we, we can move as quickly or as slowly as um, really dictated by the business owner. So what do you say? I mean, I know, like I said, we've been talking about this for so long and to still run into so many businesses who say, I don't qualify. What do you say to them, you know, to really get them push them to the edge to say, okay, I'm going to do this. What is that next? Well, I would just say that um, there, I don't know why somebody wouldn't look into it. There's absolutely no risk to do it. Um, and potentially we're talking about large sums of money. And even if it's not, even if you're getting 30 or 40 or 50 or a couple hundred thousand, or even in the millions, we've gone up to as high as $6 million in credits. I'm not saying that that's going to happen every day, but it's, it's money that uh, is available to the business owner. We're all going to pay for it. They might as well take advantage of it and, and get what is coming to them. 
Um, I just don't understand why a business owner wouldn't look into it. Um, I, I've talked with a lot of business owners and they say, I'm really busy. I, I just don't have time to pull the documentation together. And we understand that and we're going to be patient, but we are really trying to help as many business owners as we possibly can. And I encourage anyone who is watching this um, to um, contact Omega or somebody else who is a reputable firm, and I'm going to stress reputable and has a history, um, and and look into it. I think that it, you're doing yourself a disservice if you're just saying, I don't qualify, or, or I don't think I qualify. Um, there are several different calculations that that can be made. There's not just one calculation, there's actually alternative quarters, and there's there's different methods. So really leave it to a professional to do it. And um, I, I just think that you owe it to yourself to check it out. I completely agree. If it do doesn't cost them anything, they should always look in to see what kind of uh, refunds or credits they can get because that sometimes makes the you know difference whether they're here next year or not. And so- I know, agree with food costs going up and labor going up. I mean, I think we can all use a helping hand. And if you can- um, help stoke the, uh, the war chest, if you will. Um, I think it's a very smart idea. I completely agree. So we talked a little bit too about, um, I think this program will sunset in 2024, if I'm correct. Um, do we see any, or have we heard anything about any revisions that we think that might extend it beyond 2024? None whatsoever. So once it's done, it's done. It's done. That's correct. <laughs> Until the next government credit that comes out and God only knows what that one will be. <laughs> gotcha. So even more sense of urgency is we're already coming upon 2023 and what, almost three years into the pandemic. And so I think everybody needs to take advantage of it as soon as they can. And, um, you know, I know that's we- good point, Siobhan. And I hate to interrupt, but, but yeah. that's true because 2023 is upon us. So uh, the end of the first quarter um, of 2023 will be the limit or, or actually will be the deadline for filing for the first quarter of 2020. So after that, um, they could potentially lose out on money if they would have qualified for the first quarter of 2020. So yes, it, wow. it really is imperative that you look into it sooner as opposed to later. Perfect. And then you know, you and I have talked a little bit. If somebody wants to get in contact with you guys, is there um, a way that they would do that? I know we've talked about a landing page. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? I believe you're going to have a landing page on, on your website. Um, and um, anybody who is interested can just click on that, uh, fill out their information, and one of our representatives will call you. It is strictly a... Um, an informative and educational call. We're trying to find out more about your business and we're going to explain the program. Look at that. We're going to explain the program and we're gonna explain our process and walk you through it. It is not high pressured. Um, it, it literally, it's, uh, it, we're, we're this, we are there to answer questions. If you'd like to proceed in the, with, the, with the program and have us look at it, great. And if not, happy to have the call. Yeah, that's, it's nice for everybody to know that there's um, nothing involved, you know, just to learn and to be a little bit more educated. I think that's a great way. Um, and so, you know, I know we've talked about there's a little bit of a time difference for us. Is there times that people should be aware of here in Hawaii? Well, we are based on the West Coast, but we do have people here from 6 a.m. until... 7 p.m. So that's what four o'clock, I believe, your time. Mm -hmm. um, so um, and they can also, um, you know, with with the um, the link that that they can click on, we will realize or we'll see where they are calling from, and we will make sure that we call back during the the appropriate hours. That's great. Well, thank you so much. I feel like you've really. Um, you know, given so much more education to the program, you've explained a lot, you know, we've both said, I think everybody needs to jump on it before time runs out, because like we said, 2023 is upon us. And, you know, one more thing, I think we, we are the restaurants of Hawaii and that's uh, think tech, but does this 
um, mean that other businesses here in Hawaii, so if they're listening and they're not a restaurant, do they qualify for this as well? Absolutely. Potentially qualify. I can't really, you know, say without uh, um, really having a conversation and, and, and finding out the circumstances, but I will tell you that um, I really haven't come across a restaurant that we have not been able to qualify. Wow, that's great news. That that's, uh, says it all right there. So um, thank you again so much, Jerry, for coming on. We really are very glad to have you guys as our newest corporate partner. And we're glad to have you be able to explain a little bit more in detail how this program works and to be able to help our restaurants and our local businesses. And as always, uh, the HRA is the voice of Hawaii restaurant food service industry. And if you would like to reach out to us and learn more, please email us at info at hawaiirestaurant.org. And as Jerry mentioned, we will have that landing page up on our website shortly. So if you would like more information, please visit our hawaiirestaurant.org website, and we will be happy to help you. Thank you again so much, Jerry. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.